Ever since I posted my video back on July 15th about how to practice drums in an apartment, I've been interested in seeing how I can further improve the quietness of my setup. I received a lot of recommendations in the comments just on that video to build a tennis ball riser, so I decided to do some research. My dilemma was whether or not to build a tennis ball riser or something heavier and denser with a more professional grade acoustical foam. I really liked the design simplicity and cost effectiveness of the tennis ball riser though, so I decided to give it a go. I also created an alternate design for the tennis ball riser that doesn't require tools. As you guys know, I live in an apartment and so I don't have a bunch of tools here and I also don't own a truck and I don't have a way to get a big piece of wood in here to, to build this riser. So I had to come up with some other ways around that. So with the exception of a drill, this is the no tools version and very much the apartment version of how you can build a tennis ball riser like this here in your apartment. However, my big curiosity the whole time has been how well do these things actually work? It seems like of all the videos out there already on YouTube about people building these, nobody's really answered that question. So today we're not only going to build the riser, but we're also going to test it from the floor below to see how well or not well it works. So let's get started. Welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. If you're new to the channel, I hope you'll subscribe. I'm all about giving you all the non-glamorous tips and tricks of the trade to give you all the information you need to become a better drummer. And today's video is a great example of something non-glamorous because there's not a whole lot of glamour in building a tennis ball riser. So if you're familiar with how most people build these tennis ball risers, or maybe you've built one yourself and you've probably done it the traditional method, which is where you get a, a big piece of plywood or two pieces of plywood and you cut holes in that plywood, so that the tennis balls can be situated in those holes. The holes are small enough that they just hold the tennis ball there. The ball doesn't go through the hole, it just sits on it and it keeps it stable. Now this was what I knew that I could not do because I don't have tools here in my apartment. And so I was gonna need to figure out a way to build this without cutting any holes. So I was gonna need to find another way to mount the tennis balls between the boards that I decided to use. Here's what you'll need to build this tennis ball riser the way that I built it. So this is just my method, here's what I used. 18 two by two squares of MDF board, a pool noodle, a foam pool noodle that's about, I don't know, five feet long. Um, you won't even use the whole noodle, you'll probably use about three feet of it. Some zip ties, these are way more than I need, just make sure that they're long enough to loop through both layers of the riser, depending on how tall you're building this. Wood glue, and last but not least, tennis balls. About 45 of them, I think I used 43 in total, so I had two extra. And some additional items that I use just for extra isolation and just to make this thing a little heftier. I've got layers of foam that I use below the actual riser and on top, and then of course carpet on the top. So those are kind of the obvious things that you might wanna go ahead and add. So I went to Home Depot, checked out the lumber aisle, and I found that they have these smaller squares of MDF board. So MDF board is a little different from plywood. MDF is generally denser than plywood. So I knew it was gonna be dense and heavy, which was something I needed. It's also very strong. And because it's an engineered wood product, it's totally smooth and molded into these exact squares. So it was gonna be very clean, not rough, and it was gonna look good and just work well for my purposes here. So that's why I decided to go with the MDF board. So I originally intended for this drum platform to be five and a half by five and a half, a big square platform that the whole kit would be on that I would also sit on. It ended up working out to, to make more sense to do a six by six because of these two by two squares. So if I make this tennis ball riser in a bunch of squares, put the squares together to form the riser, there's gonna to need to be nine of those squares. Each one's two by two, the whole thing is gonna be six by six. So I bought 18 of the MDF boards. I decided to go with quarter inch. I decided I could get by with the quarter inch. Number one, it was cheaper. Number two, I knew I was gonna use a lot of tennis balls to support this, and so it's not like there was gonna be a lot of board bowing underweight because it would be supported by tennis balls. I also didn't want this thing to get crazy heavy because I knew I was gonna be transporting it to go test it somewhere else. So that's why I went with the thinner board and it's holding up just fine. I also bought 36 tennis balls starting out and decided to get a few more extra, which I'm glad I did. I had a total of 45 by the time it was all said and done. So about 45 tennis balls to build this six by six platform. So the big challenge was figuring out how to mount the tennis balls between these pieces of MDF board because I decided not to cut the holes. That definitely posed a challenge, so I played around with a lot of different ideas. This whole thing was a process and it took a while to finally land on this idea. While I was out shopping for the extra tennis balls, my wife was with me and we're like brainstorming, okay, I need like some kind of little ring, like foam ring or something. I could glue these rings onto the MDF board, situate the tennis balls in the rings it would hold perfectly because I could glue those rings onto there. She noticed the like pool noodles. There was a pool noodle display. This time of year, that stuff is super cheap because nobody's buying pool noodles in October. So I bought a pool noodle for 50 cents and decided to slice it up because I could use those rings to mount the tennis balls. 
So shout out to Meredith, she helped me come up with that. And it is working really well so far. It's actually holding up pretty well, better than the other ideas. So here's what I did. Of course, first I had to measure out on each board where I was gonna place each of these rings, which I used with a template that I made out of a piece of cardboard, so that helped speed up the process. I poked holes in the template and I would use those laying it on each board to make the marks that would be in the center where I would place each ring. So that whole process went pretty fast. I would slice up the, the pool noodle just like slicing up a vegetable put some dabs of wood glue on it and slap it on there. And so I got this whole process going, got all of the, the squares done. But as you can see here in this shot where I've got them all stacked up, they're, uh, they're very bouncy. It's like moving around with a spring here as I'm pushing them around. And I decided to go ahead and set it up and see how well it worked. It ended up being pretty shaky. The boards were holding up just fine. Like I wasn't worried about a board cracking. It was supporting the weight of the drum set. But if you would step on one of them, even if it had a lot of tennis ball support, it would wiggle back and forth. So that's where I knew, okay, I've got to do the next step. I've got to put zip ties on this thing, which is a kind of a standard thing that most people do with their tennis ball risers anyway, so that it doesn't totally fall apart on you. This is where the drill comes in. So this is really the only power tool I had to use, just drilling holes in each corner of each board so that I could thread the zip tie through and tighten it down. This entire process took a long time, so I'm just showing you a couple clips of it. So I drilled holes in the corner of all of the boards and got the zip tie tightened down just to where the, the board would start to bow because I had each corner really tight so that I knew it would definitely stay together and not wiggle back and forth. I'll also go ahead and show you right here in this shot. Here's a shot of one of the squares that I built to support more weight. This one has four more tennis balls on it than the rest of them. I made most of them with just five tennis balls, one on each corner, one in the middle, which is fine when all it's supporting is a cymbal stand or hi-hat stand. But the square that has my throne on it that I'm sitting on needs the extra support. So does the next one in front where my right leg is and then the one where the kick drum is. And so I made all of these with more tennis balls. So I added extra pool noodles there. Uh, just so these things would be more sturdy. What is really cool when you've got that many tennis balls in there, even though it's only a quarter inch MDF board, you stand on it and it feels very solid. Like there's no bowing of the wood. It might as well be a half inch or three quarter inch MDF board. As you can guess, I just place the tennis balls on each of those rings. They get situated nicely in there. Lay down the next board on top of that. It sits in place perfectly. It wobbles around just a little bit, but you know, the balls are held securely there, or at least they're cradled. They're cradled securely in there by the pool noodles. Nothing's going anywhere, nothing's gonna break. This is holding up pretty well, so this should get the job done. So actually, my original plan was to have nine of these squares for a giant square tennis ball riser, but I realized it didn't actually make sense to have the two back corner squares because of a shelf that I have off to the side and just because there's, no, there's not gonna be anything sitting on the one directly to my left. So this actually ended up being six squares, so a rectangle that the drum sets on, then one square in addition to that that I sit on. So I had some extra MDF boards, which I just lay on top of what I've got for extra reinforcement, especially the one that I'm sitting on, just to make sure the legs of the throne aren't putting any stress on the MDF. So this whole tennis ball riser sandwich consists of, um, well, I've got a carpeted floor in the very bottom. Even if it were hardwood, I would go ahead and start with the foam, which is what I do here. So first layer is a layer of workout floor mat foam that you can get at Walmart or on Amazon. They're like jigsaw puzzle pieces, snap them together. That's the first layer. Then I laid out the tennis ball tiles on top of that. On top of that is the next layer of foam, which is the same type of foam. This just happens to be a different color. And then on top of that, a rug that I make sure will go underneath the throne and the kick drum. Now, ideally, I would just have one big rug here that would perfectly fit this, but I don't. So I have to use my smaller rug to connect the throne with the kick. And then I've got my other bigger rug that I just lay perpendicular to that that the whole kit will be on. So this is just to make sure nothing slides around. Um, this works really well, it's been fine. At that point, we're ready to set up the kit and test it out. So now, the moment we've all been waiting for and that I was eagerly waiting for because I really wanted to know if this whole thing was worth the money that I spent on it. So here we've got it set up in a living room. There is a basement beneath this living room so that we can go down to that basement and hear what this sounds like through the floor. Now this living room has hardwood floors and so it's actually not as isolating as if there were carpet and carpet padding. That would actually help things be even quieter. I'm also not totally sure if there's any insulation in this floor. But regardless, we'll see if there's a difference. That's what we're looking for here, a difference between the kit just set up on a piece of carpet, no riser, and the kit set up on the riser with the foam and the carpet and everything. By the way, I'm recording the audio with my Tascam handheld recorder, which is um, just a stereo condenser mic with no effects. This is totally raw. It's a very sensitive mic when I crank the gain up which I did have to crank up very high for this 
to actually pick up the subtle noise of a drum set up through the ceiling. You'll actually notice that my footsteps walking towards and away from the drum set are louder than the playing itself. So that gives you an idea of just how quiet the whole practice kit actually is. This is the super pad on the kick, the Artom on the snare, and the Zildjian L80s on the hi-hats. So this whole thing is not loud at all. So here it is, um, no tennis ball riser, just sitting on a piece of carpet on the hardwood floors. Here's what it sounds like. And now let's set it all up again and set it up on the riser with all the layers of foam and carpet and everything and see what it sounds like downstairs. So moral of the story here, yes, it does actually work. I think it's worth it. It's not a massive difference because we're talking about a quiet practice kit already. The whole, my whole kit with the L80 cymbals and the super pads, it's not loud. I can sit there playing and I can talk over it. It's not at all a loud kit. So the neighbors might not even hear it a lot to begin with, but this is just one of those additional measures that, that we can do that makes it even quieter and just takes a little bit of that rumble away. It's funny how listening to it, we can't tell as much just because we're talking about low frequencies here. And when the frequencies are low like that, there's less of a difference to our ears and more of a difference in feel. And so if I were sitting down there listening to myself play it, I would feel a bigger difference because there would suddenly be a lot less low frequency going through the ceiling, going through the walls. What I also observed here was that if you move just a few feet out from under the kit on the floor below, you don't notice it. For instance, in this apartment, the neighbors downstairs might hear a little of it thumping if they're standing right beneath it here, but if they move outside that room, they're not gonna hear it because it's not traveling through the walls. You're only gonna hear a little of it directly underneath. The tennis ball riser greatly reduces the amount of space throughout a building that that noise can travel. So I think that very much makes it worth building, makes it worth doing, especially if you're getting any kind of complaints from your neighbor, this could solve your problem. So yes, it works, and yes, I recommend it. So everybody, thanks for watching. I really hope this helped you out as much as this whole thing has helped me out. Big thanks to all my subscribers for watching my videos. And if you haven't subscribed, I really hope you will. Um, if you're interested in all these non-glamorous drum things, I've got drum lessons, I've got technique stuff, DIY stuff like this, and just general tuning tips and gear reviews, things like that all over the channel. So I hope you'll find something useful here if you check out my other videos. So guys, thanks so much for watching. I will see you on the next video. Don't use that.